Hello and welcome, my name is Morten Breke Stensland and in this video I will take you through all you need to know about our new software called QTimer. QTimer requires a computer with Windows 10 and you need two monitors. The first monitor is usually the monitor on your laptop and uh, you need an extra monitor to see the countdown. And in the Windows configuration you would usually set it up like this, with this being your main display and this being your extended display, so it's not mirror displayed. And for longer cable distances, you usually need some kind of extender system, like an HDMI repeater, Ethernet, or like this SDI, or fiber. When everything is connected and you have turned on the program, the first thing you can do is to push the full screen button. This will make sure that the countdown is displayed on the external monitor. Right now there is nothing there because we don't have a countdown yet. But as soon as we do this, you'll see that we have the countdown on the screen. And on the interface, you can also have what we call the preview button. This is an exact copy of what is shown on the external monitor. And you can place it anywhere you like on your surface, just so that it fits your workflow. I think we can leave it right here. To create a new countdown, push the new button. We need to do this in order to display something in our window. So let's just say we start with John, he speaks for 30 minutes, and now you can see he's lined up, this is his total time. And then we uh, add some more names. Let us say this is our schedule for the day. And uh, we can easily edit this schedule. For example, Jens is not talking for 10 minutes, he's talking for 50 minutes. You can go here and make changes, change the name. If it's not Jens, it's Jan, you can change the names. If you want to change the order, you can do this. And now you must be careful with what is the blue or the cyan color, because uh, if, if Jan goes before Jane, then you um, push anywhere here to select Jan, which is marked by the cyan color. And then you can push move up and then they will swap. And you can select multiple names by uh, pushing the shift button and now pushing here and you can move them down. So you can do this freely. And uh, the top is the green one, is always the one who is next to start. And you can copy and paste and delete. Now, in order to start a countdown, you go here from the edit tab to the show tab. And you push the button fire next with the shortcut control space. As you can see, now this changes color to red, which means that this countdown is now running. And this also gives you some more information. You can see here the time finish, which is an, it's not an estimation, but it's exactly when uh, this countdown will finish. And you can see the remaining content here, which is just a copy of what is displayed on the monitor. So now let us uh, say that uh, Jane is finished and we want to go to our next speaker. Uh, then we can push the button Q next with shortcut control plus enter. Now this will then go, go away from this uh, countdown here and then display John's countdown. And we can see his total time here. I think this is useful to look at when somebody is preparing to start the speech. And then when they are starting the speech, this time will go running again. So we can go to the next and the next. And then we can go to the beginning again. I mean, this is not so realistic, but uh, this is how it works. Now, let us say we are in our first presenter here, Jane, and we go to John, we think he's starting. Um, but then we find out that Jane wasn't actually finished. She, uh, she was just going on, on to sip a cup of water. What we can do then is to push this continue previous button. Now this will continue Jane's speech where she left off. So the countdown doesn't stop right away but it continues in case you need to go back. So these other buttons should be quite uh, easy to understand. We have the pause button 
and also you can see the shortcuts uh, displayed for that if you need that it will pause the countdown and then you can uh, continue it when you want to and we have the restart in case they need to start again and then it's the continue previous button which was like the undo button and we have the blackout which is uh, in case you want to black out the screen sometimes people don't need uh, countdown then it's useful to, with the blackout when we create countdowns we are four types of timers the normal is duration which counts down to zero this is john he's going to speak for 30 minutes and then we have something called countdown to time let us say we have somebody who just need to speak until six o'clock then we choose the end time and we, we put this to the end time that is going to finish, which is 6 o'clock. So now when this countdown starts, it will just take this time and subtract. So it's about 8 minutes, 8.5 minutes from now until 6 o'clock. This is useful if, uh, let us say, food is served at 6 o'clock, so we just need to have, to have someone speaking about anything until that time. Then we have the clock, which is just a clock. And this is useful for breaks, for example, or uh, when there's nothing to count down for. And in the end, we have the blank, which is for the artist, for example, who don't want to have a countdown. We can insert a blank. And these countdowns are also editable. For example, if you want to change the next one to a countdown because you don't want the speaker to to speak until 6, you can just go here and change it. And let's say you even want them to speak for 10 minutes instead. It's possible to send small messages to the speaker by using the message field. Let's say you want to say something to John don't mention the war. It's very important. So we send it to him and it's displayed on the top here. So when we don't want to display it anymore, we push the send button again. And this duration here is kind of interesting because during beta testing, I noticed that I send the message and then I forgot to turn it off again. So to help myself, Remembering to turn it off, we created the duration. So now the message will only display in 10 seconds and after 10 seconds, it will stop displaying. There are several ways you can add or subtract time from the countdown. For example, you can go right here and edit the duration. You turn it into 11 minutes. And as you can see, we just gave it one minute more. We can go here and edit the time, the finishing time. If you want him to uh, end at 10 instead of uh, now, you give him even more time. I think the best way to do this is to use the plus and minus button here because they are so easy to see. And they always apply to the red timer in the project, which is the timer which is displayed. So if you give him one minute here, you push the plus one button, extract one minute, push it here. So what in the world is this speed doing here? Can we actually speed up and down the countdown? Yes, we can. And why would this be useful? Let us say that we have John here. He's speaking until 1848. But we really want him to finish a little bit earlier than that. But by using this up and down button, we are afraid that he will notice the change very easily. So we don't want him to notice the change, but we want him to finish a bit earlier then we can change the speed of the countdown. So the easiest way is to use this uh, right here in the top. Let's see what happens. We move it a little bit faster and suddenly now he's finishing uh, way below what we want him to do. And nobody is noticing anything. So now our speed is 108%. You can actually if you really look closely, maybe you can see that it goes a little bit fast, but it's very hard for someone to see this. 
Now, another example is if you want him to speak longer, but we don't want him to notice it. Then we can slow down his speed. So now, if you want him to finish at, at 7, yeah, something like this. I mean, maybe you know it's actually going slower, uh, but it's quite hard to see. So speed is uh, something that I would use with caution. But if you have a presenter who is very concerned about all his surroundings and you don't want him to notice any change in the countdown, the speed can be a very efficient way of manipulating the time left in the most elegant way. You can change the appearance of the countdown in a countdown style menu. And this is the way our countdown looks. And remember that this is a copy of how the full screen looks. So for now, we can just use this as an example and we'll make this a little bit bigger so we can see what changes we are doing. First of all, to do changes in this menu, you must always push Ctrl plus S or push the save button to see what you are changing. So we do this first example here. Do we want to display the hours or not? This is how it looks when we're not displaying the hours. Here you can set the location of the different elements in the countdown window. So we have the message. Let's just uh, put on a message like this. Um, one useful thing you can do here is that you can replace it with the countdown so that it's here instead of the countdown. And then if you're having a name here, you could also replace it for the name or the description. So now it's here but we put it on top. And the same you can do with the countdown and the description. One useful here is that you can hide the description. And sometimes you only need to display the name for yourself to know where you are in the, in the countdowns. But maybe you don't need to display it on the screen. But we put it on the bottom. And here you can fine tune, for example, we like to have the description a little bit above the bottom, so we put it a little bit notch here. So we can see what happens here if you change it. Yeah. So basically you have a scalable solution where you can scale everything exactly the way you want. The size changes the size. Just want to see an example here. You change the size of the countdown, it gets smaller. And here is the fonts. And you can change into whatever fonts you like that is installed on your system. In the bottom, we have the variable fonts, which are not suitable for countdown because they will, yeah, they will change the, while they are counting down. So instead, you need to use the top countdowns for countdown, which are the monotypes. As you can see, they are not changing. But of course, you can use the variable fonts for the description, if you like to. So this was the general settings. The four next tabs in the menu shows different styles of the countdown depending on what is the state of the countdown. A normal countdown is what is usually shown when the countdown is red and it's going down. And then we have the pause or queue next. It is when it's in pause state, like now. As you can see, it's a little bit grayer than uh, when it was uh, running. And you can change these uh, colors and the animation. Now, the warning is when there's less than 1 minute and 30 seconds left, you can have this, I choose to have this color here, so that it really sticks out that it's uh, soon done. And then, when it gets close, uh, when this one runs out, then it changes color to something else. We have the overtime template. So here you can see in all of these different settings, you can have the animation, you have the countdown color and the background color. You change the color by pushing here. For example, you can have some whatever you want like this. And uh, you have 
these normal colors and then you have this more advanced uh, RGB color board if you have some very specific RGB um, color that you want to show you can do that here so we go back to the red one and we have the blink and we have the flash It's possible to create different templates of styles and you do this by pushing this button here and now you can change something for example you don't want to display the hours and uh, make it a little bit bigger like this and we change the font just for fun so now you have this new and you have the default so you can choose between them and you can also delete things and here you can export and import so this will export both your templates this you can use if you are using this program on different computers etc so this is how you save the countdown style to save this here the queue list you go to the file tab and choose the export and here you can also import queue lists. But normally we wouldn't be saving and loading that much because everything in this program is auto saved. For example, now if I go out of this program and I go back, everything is as it was, even the countdown. So if you need to shut down your computer for some reason, your countdown will still be there with the same time finish. For more information about this application QTimer, please go to our webpage presentationtools.com. There you can both download the PDF manual and you can download the program and try it as much as you want in trial mode. Thank you for watching this tutorial and take care.